I don't know what lane this is. If you do know, please leave it in the comments. But when the zombie apocalypse comes, that propeller will get them right there. Look at that thing. That's a big old propeller right there. in that seven pistons that's good to know wait a minute it's got to be an even number ain't it Here, so we're gonna check that out while we're in. Here. Well, it took me a minute, but uh, right there, that's uh, coming out of the gas tank going to the wing. It's one of the crossover tubes, and it looks disgusting. Goodbye, flashlight. But we have evidence of fuel come out of there. It's out of that hose clamp to your left hand of your screen there. So we're gonna have to replace that and it's gonna stink. Got a little bit of blue on my hands and uh, I'd say that line is, uh, that hose right there needs to be replaced. What do you guys think about that? So this oil pressure sensor was leaking and it leaked onto the JPI and it fried it. So we're gonna change this oil pressure sensor out. Hopefully we can just get the sensor by itself. But I'm fixing to hook it up to air pressure so we can watch it actively blow bubbles. I see where she leaking from. There's some more water. <laughs> the, die, the bellow that comes out has a hole in it. Getting it? Yep. It ain't a big one, but it's, that's all you need. All right. Here we are doing an annual on an Aztec, an Az truck. Um, and we're doing, we're doing strut servicing. Uh, as you can tell right there, that right there would be dirty hydro leaking from the seals in there. Um, which means we will most definitely be rebuilding this strut. All right, so here's the strut cleaned off just so you can see that uh, it is an active leak. So we're gonna push it all the way back up in there. And then if you wait and watch as we come down, there's your leak right there, evidence. All right, well, you've got a busy day here at the shop. We're doing engine swap on this Aztec. Is that what this is called? An Aztec? Yes, sir. Aztec. All right. So that's coming off, and we're doing all four fuel bladders. So now this is fresh out of wash, but you can see like it's already got blue around the panels, and there's no fuel on it because the tank's in the drain. So it's gonna be changing some fuel bladders today, and hopefully it won't be terrible. This is what the perfect fuel bladder installer looks like. His arms are twice the length of his body. How come I'm not using an electric ratchet right now? Because you spent too much money on that tool. What is this? What's another reason? Possibly, I'm not using an electric ratchet on this. Because it's fuel bladders. Nah. And I don't want to die today. I mean, just because you're scared. I'm gonna light up my cigarette. Hold on, man. I will never understand people messing with Avgas with electric tools. It blows up, y'all. They're just not scared. I guess so. There's a lot of bolts. We're halfway there. I didn't know if y'all needed any more. You're welcome. My wife told me I'd never use these stubbing ratcheting wrenches. You were wrong, wife. <laughs> well, 
to be fair, ex-wife, she left me this morning. But I used it today, so joke's on you, ex-wife. Like to get this freed up around this hole, I got a bolt and I cut the head off and I'll thread this in. And then now I'll hit this with a hammer to make it come free. I try to keep the bladder as good as possible just in case something goes wrong and we have to reuse one of them and maybe do like a milder pair on it while we wait for the a good one to come in. Because sometimes I'll send them in and it may, might, may not be the right ones, which sucks, but it happens. So then you use the world's largest hammer, all four ounces of it. All right, finally got that sucker freed up. So, now I'll go check the part number and see. What so now I like to come over here and look at the tank I'm gonna install. That's the piece we just hit out. This is the big one we took out where the fuel sending unit is. And then I'm gonna count how many snaps I have so I can make sure I get all the snaps done. And also I'll see how many hose hookups are in the tank. And this one, it looks like it's pretty simple and it's just one, so. We'll get this unhooked and then we'll start pulling this whole tank out. I usually stick this thing on the wing to keep from scratching it up because you gotta lay on it. Um, everything's unhooked. This bladder is gonna rip into pieces because some of it already has. So it's probably super old. Let's find All right, we got it out. We got angry music going to help you get it out. But here you can see it was leaking from around the hold downs. So none of these were clipped in. It was only clipped in by the bottom ones which are also a pain, but it's leaking from all of those. Probably because they weren't clipped in like they're supposed to be. So now you got your kit, 321E, 321E. I'm gonna transfer all the top clips over from the bag. It's pretty simple. You lift it up, you slide the clamp in, and you put it through the grommet right there. And there it is, that's that one. And as long as you take your time, they go in. All right, this is a washer I made to help pull these through little holes in the spars. Um, this is a really easy tank, there's only one. So we're only gonna need to use one of these. And I'll go ahead and show you how this works. So before you try to put it in and you can get to everything, what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll pull it through. And then the reason this is so big and the washers are wrapped around it is so that it can push against this area without cutting into it. So now that that is snug in there, we put it in, we'll run this in through the hole. So this fuel strainer is gonna go through here and it's gonna get clamped, but I can't put it through here until after I pull the string out. After you pull the string out, when you go to push this in, it's gonna wanna push it back through the hole. So let me show you how to stop that. These are two gear inch pass-through sockets. This is usually what I use. As you can see, it'll go around this, protect the strainer. We'll put this on the inside of the tank here and then somebody can hold it from pretty far away after you get it lined up and they can push pressure while you slide this end in and then you can clamp it and then you're done. All right, so on this tank, the Aztec tank, the last time I did this was on a Baron, so I'm pretty happy that this is so much easier. Um, but this one has got these weird clips that like slide in place and they go in the four corners so the way that this works is you stretch the tank over it and then it will come back and grab that little nub. So getting the first two in is not bad, but getting the other two in on the other side is gonna be hard. So other than these, this tank is pretty simple. So you got your string and it's run through your hole. And now when you run the tank in there, you can pull this string and feed the tube through there and then your life won't suck as All bad. I can do is go ahead put the string through the clamp too. So that way your clamp is already on top of your tube. That's what she said. That is what she said. All right, let's put her in.
ya! Now it is through. Clamp is in place. And then we take the top half and we pull it back through. I just gotta put the fuel strainer line in and we're gonna go. All right, so to help slide this through the hole and lubricate it, I spray it with some alcohol. Here's where this tool comes in handy. I've got to put a gasket here, then that metal bracket, and then another gasket between the metal bracket and this flange. So when I put this through here, I can use it and grab this and like pick it up and line things up. So it's always good to have one of these suckers. I got a bolt ready. Might have to get a longer one, we'll see. And then literally I can pick this up, put it through the hole. Now I got my gaskets in there and my metal plate. And then I can do like that, and then I'll put my bolt in to hold it, and then I'll just work my way around, making sure everything is lined up. Right, we got it started, so I take this joker out. I forgot to order new gaskets for the fuel cylinders, so we'll get those replaced later. So here I am using the stud again, getting that gasket lined up. It can be a really big pain, but this makes it pretty easy. So I'll just take it through, line it up with my hole. I come back. I use both hands for this. All right, got them started. So now I can take mine out, put it back in my box for later. Well, actually, I'm gonna keep it out because I got three more of these to do. Boom. Make you one. We got the engine off and the new one on. Everybody's box is dirty. It's been working. And probably just gonna lay out the rest of the week because I don't feel like working. This plane needs paint. Probably the most annoying thing about doing bladders is it comes with these rolls of tape. These are open holes. This is taped up to prevent fog, but you have to tape seams inside. Like all around here gets taped. The head of the rivets get taped so nothing will chafe the bladder and make it messed up. Like you can see like the actual lines, like all that gets retaped. I forgot to really show it on the other one, but you take up the old tape and you put down this new tape. The bladders come with tape and you do that all in the tank and it takes longer than it takes to put the tank in and out, but it keeps it from chafing and ruining the bladder. Check out this manual for the Aztec. Um, this is supposed to say time. Exercise certain precautions at the time of installation, but that, is an F, just like that is an F. Fime, fime of installation. All right, which one of y'all, which one of y'all did it? Some idiot <laughs> has glued this down. It's in an inspection panel. So I guess when we, we I should have got a clip before we washed it, but there's blue coming out of here. Um, this is an inspection panel. If there's blue coming out of it, it has nothing to do with why the fuel bladder is leaking. You see the glue on the screw, there's glue all on this. And I'm trying to take the panel up without destroying it, and I'm getting frustrated. Action. Okay, go. Action. Yee -yee. How's it coming, man? Uh, pretty good. We're yeah. just gonna pry this right here to get it off. Yeah. Why? That's an inspection panel, though. Shouldn't it just shouldn't it just come off? You think? Um. Sometimes this is uh. See, this airplane is really old. Is it? Is this not a fuel bladder? Is this a cell? Is this a? A wet wing now? Yeah, that I forgot. It was bladders on the right side, wet wing on the left side. Because I didn't want to, you know, do too much at one time. I want their A&P number. I want it bad. <laughs> I want it bad. I want them gone. <laughs> yep, there, get the out. I'm going to do something to you. Something bad. Yeah. A new fuel sender unit. This one's much bluer than the others. Yeah, that may be why they use catching hair. 
Yeah, because that fixes it. It doesn't though. It, that has nothing to do. That's not a fix. That's a. Bro, it's everywhere. What, Luke? 1300. <laughs> it just dripped down all over it. Yeah, they, that's 1300. We got some retards working in GA. Had some. Had. Had? No, I still work here, so. So this is the same panel that was glued down. I'm taking the tape up. Look at that. All right, so this piece of tape um, would have been like this, hitting the tank, but the tape, obviously stuff got around it because it's not very sticky because it's old. And you can see in the fuel bladder all the abrasion marks. And like that's where it was leaking there. You see uh, where it got all scratched up from all the metal that's in the tank. So we're gonna be vacuuming and cleaning this one for quite some time. We'll pull by the tape. We went ahead and taped this. We haven't taken the old one out yet, but when you put the new one in, new ones in, you tape around this so you don't cut it. But like, that is the green primer color that it should be. And on this one with the sheet metal shavings, it's good in blue. So, we've got the sheet metal in this, we've got the 1300 glue. This is just a perfect storm. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Look in the description box to check out our store. Buy something or don't. We only make like 50 cents off each product, so we really don't care. Have a great day. Action. This right here, it's not the original Ford bracket. <laughs> this carburetor's wobbling. <laughs> hey, the, the crank seal's blown too. If you look right there, you can see the wobble. Did that have alternator issues? Shoot, this alternator probably put out steady amps all the time. Probably never had any issues with it. Hey, this is an annual, no squawks coming in. An annual with no squawks coming in. Well, I already okay, got, got six one. of them. Get the